Good evening, and welcome to this evening's Bible class. Would you bow with me in a word of prayer? Our Father and our God, Father, Lord, and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, once more again, we come with bowed heads and humble hearts. Thank you, Father, for allowing us to assemble here to study another portion of your word. We just pray, Father, that you would bless each and every one of us. Father, we would come with open hearts and open minds that we will be able to study the things, Father, that will be presented unto us. We just pray, Father, that you would bless us, protect us, and keep us safe. Now, Father, these best in prayer in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Hello and good evening, family and friends, saints of God, lovers of the truth. Welcome to Bible study. Oh, now we rise to give God glory and we still rise to give him praise for our great God is in fact worthy to be praised. Come on, someone from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. The Lord is great and greatly to be praised. Oh, how magnificent, how mighty, how marvelous, how majestic, how matchless and how meaningful too is the name of the Lord our God. If you feel like I feel, you are grateful for one more day. Amen, somebody? Come on, take a moment and encourage someone in the live chat. We are grateful for one more day. God has blessed us with one more day and the Lord continues to shower his unconditional love to give us his amazing grace. And he provides for us the peace that surpasses all understanding. There ought to be at least one witness and I'd make two that God is in the blessing business. Amen, somebody. I say God is in the blessing business and God has ushered us into this moment right now for spiritual nourishment and encouragement for our souls. So we say from the outset, we pray that something is said that will encourage your life here on today's broadcast. Well, now to those that might be visiting, we want you to know that you are our honored guest and uh, we appreciate you for joining in to this Bible study. We also encourage you to share this message with as many of your family and friends as you possibly can. We just know that as God blesses us, he expects for us to be a blessing to someone else as well. And now to my brothers and sisters, the superlative saints of the South Union Church of Christ. Come on, you already know what time it is. Oh, how sweet it is to be a child of the king. If you have your electronic devices, why don't you meet us or beat us? Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. But Christ, being come and high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. If that's in your Bible, someone take a moment, type into the live chat. It's time for our spiritual blessing. Amen. It's time for our spiritual blessing. And right under that, here is today's topic, theme, and thrust for the text. It's nothing but the blood. Hallelujah, somebody. Praise the mighty name of King Jesus. It's nothing but the blood. Whether you're speaking of the animal kingdom, whether you're speaking of humanity itself, blood is vitally important for our survival and our very existence while upon this earth. Now it's important for us to see and appreciate this fact because if you have been a religious person and if you have come up in the church, 
if you are a true worshiper of the Lord, then you know that there are many hymns of Zion that we sing that reference blood, especially and particularly the blood of Jesus Christ. But there's power in the blood. There's power in the blood of the lamb. We ask the question, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious. Come on, someone. Is that flow that makes me white as snow? No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus that flows from Calvary, the blood of Jesus, here it is, that gives me strength from day to day to day to day to day. It will never lose its power. Why is it that blood and blood talk? when we speak about the redemptive nature of Jesus Christ, why is it that we get excited? Why is it that we are exuberant? Why is it that we are prayerfully thankful for the blood of Jesus Christ? I want us to know, family, there's something special about the blood. Come on, can you encourage someone right now? There's something special about the blood and especially the blood of Jesus the Christ. Now, in this pericope of scripture, we know that the Hebrew writer is telling and teaching the audience of then and now that nothing compares to the blood of Jesus. Now, of course, the Hebrew writer gives us a glimpse and a shade as we hit the rewind button and go back into the annals of history, looking back to that Old Testament figure, that old Levitical system, that old sacrificial system where they took the blood of a young calf or a young goat and they would take that blood from that young calf and that goat and then that young calf or goat would be a man slaughtered for blood. Another one would be let go as a scapegoat. And then that blood, the high priest on the day of atonement would go into the holiest of holies and sprinkle the blood at the mercy seat, on the mercy seat. And of course, God would see the sacrifice that was made from that unblemished calf and he would bless that sacrifice. And then here it is, the sins of the people would be rolled forward until the next year. But each and every year, that high priest had to repeat the process because the people would sin and it was that sacrifice, it was that blood that was shed that God recognized as being the sacrifice for sin. And so he would grant the people another space of time to live and continue to have life while upon the earth. Come here for a moment, family. How much more precious is the blood of Jesus than the blood of a bull, the blood of a goat, the blood of an heifer. How much more special is the blood of Jesus? Because the blood of Jesus is innocent blood. And we're not talking about blood that was taken from the animal kingdom. We're talking about this precious blood that came down from the portals of glory because Jesus is the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, if I seem to be a little bit high strong because of the blood, it's because of the significance of the blood. And I realize what the blood has done for me. All right, let's dig into the text. Now, we want to examine this blood and we want to be thankful for the blood and forever thankful because there is no blood that compares to the blood of Christ. Come on, type that into the live chat. No blood compares to the blood of Christ. And there are a litany of scriptures in the Bible that speak 
concerning to the emphasis of blood and why we need blood to even survive. Now, uh, scientifically and even medically, we know that blood is very important because it is the blood that is called the essence of life. Are you following me? The blood is known as the essence of life. It is also the sacredness of life. Blood is the essence of life, but also the sacredness of life because life is found in the blood. Now, of course, medically speaking and even scientifically, our human anatomy, we need blood in order to survive. Here it is. Blood takes nutrients to all parts of the body and to the cells. And of course, it is the blood that brings oxygen, that brings food. It is the blood that helps to remove waste. It is the blood that gives the proper necessary nutrients for growth and sustainability as we function as wrapped in this human flesh. So every human needs blood. And as a matter of fact, not only does every human need blood, but every human needs blood in order to survive. Without blood, we are all checking out of here real soon. Without blood, we cannot make it. We need the blood because blood is vital for all of the organs to properly function in their designated places and spaces. So I'm grateful for the blood physically, the physical blood. I'm thankful for the blood that fills my body. I'm thankful and grateful for the leaders of blood that we all have running through our veins as our heart pumps this blood and circulates this blood on every second of the day. Are you with me? That's in the physical realm. But not only do we need blood physically, family. Come on, help me lift this up just a little bit higher. We need blood spiritually too. I say we need blood spiritually. Now, someone may ask the question, preacher, why do we need blood spiritually? What's the significance of the blood? Well, just like we need blood to maintain our proper functions in this human anatomy, we need blood spiritually to remain functioning properly in the spirit realm or in the world of eternity. So it takes blood to operate physically. It takes blood to operate spiritually. Now, what is said, family, about the blood in scripture? We're going to examine the first three components on tonight. Let's open up our Bibles right now. Turn with me right now to Matthew chapter 27. Matthew chapter 27. When the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, what is that to us? See thou to that. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. Notice special attention on verse four. Judas recognized that he sinned in that he betrayed innocent blood. The blood of Jesus' family is innocent blood. Now, why is this vitally and abundantly important for our well-being spiritually today? Because just as in the Old Testament, that blood of the animal had to be unspotted, a lamb without blemish, so must the blood of the eternal sacrifice be without spot and without blemish. This is why it's so important to remember 
that Jesus had no sin nor guile found in his mouth. That's why you and I cannot stand in substitution for one another and that our blood cannot cleanse uh, others from sin. And the reason why is because we have sinned. We have fallen short. We have missed the mark. We have made transgression. And whenever and wherever there is transgression of the law, sin is present. Are you following what I'm saying? And so you and I, we cannot take up for one another, eternally speaking, because we are all subject and have fallen short because sin has gotten us all. But when it comes to Jesus, we have innocent blood. And this is why we should not allow anyone to discourage us from preaching Jesus and him crucified. I know we're living in a cosmopolitan society, and I know that we're living uh, in an age where we have all of this metroism, and they're all new kind of ideas floating and philosophies out here, but there's really not anything new under the sun. Amen? I say there's really nothing new under the sun. And so everything that we see is a philosophy that reaches back to other philosophies. Well, when it comes to Jesus, we don't need to allow anybody to move us through vain deceit or spoiled philosophy because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission for sin. And specifically, we need the blood of Jesus. Amen. The blood of Jesus is the only blood that will do. Come on, encourage someone right now. The blood of Jesus is the only blood that will do. But not only do we need the blood of Jesus because it's innocent blood, but I see something else in 1 Peter chapter 1. Open your Bible, turn with me to 1 Peter chapter 1. There's something else about the blood of Jesus. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with, here it is, the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. Do you see that in the text? The blood of Jesus is precious. There is no other blood found on earth that can equal up to the blood of Jesus Christ. Precious is his name. Precious is his blood. And his blood sets us free and gives us, grants us, guarantees us redemption from sin. And then the third quality that we will reach for on today. Turn with me right now. Go with me to Hebrews. Going back, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 22 and almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with blood of others. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now in the end of the world, he hath appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice 
of himself. Hallelujah, somebody. The sacrifice of himself. We see here that the blood of Jesus is precious, but it's also necessary. Can I slide one more in here for you? Family, if you look at the text, not only is the blood of Jesus necessary, but the blood of Jesus is sufficient. <laughs> Somebody ought to help me preach in here. I say the blood of Jesus is sufficient. It's necessary, but it's sufficient. It was necessary for Jesus Christ to give of himself. So the blood of Jesus was sufficient. In other words, it appeased the wrath of God. Oh, someone type that into the live chat. The blood of Jesus appeased the wrath of God. Now, when we put it all together, we know that it's nothing, come on now, nothing but the blood. And why is it nothing but the blood? Well, because number one, the blood of Jesus is innocent. Number two, the blood of Jesus is precious. And number three, the blood of Jesus is absolutely necessary. Oh, family, never take for granted what Jesus has done. The blood of Jesus is sacred. Come on, somebody. The blood of Jesus is the essence of spiritual life itself. And the blood of Jesus ushers in atonement. Thank God for the blood because it's nothing but the blood. You've got it. It's nothing but the blood. And so when we ask the question, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Now, to bring it into application, we must not allow this society to make us feel inferior because we name the name of Jesus. Are you following what I'm saying? Oh, people don't have a problem with acknowledging God, and that's good. Ultimately, we give God glory in all that we do. But the only way we get to God, the only way we get to the Father, is through Jesus Christ, his Son. We must not deny Jesus, because it's nothing yeah, <laughs> but the blood. All right, I think you've got it on a Sunday night. I pray that we will not compromise, nor will we convolute the preaching of the gospel because it is the gospel that saves our soul. You see, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. And it is only by his name that we have access to the Father who's on high. Remember, it's nothing but the blood. Well, we appreciate you tuning in and studying with us on tonight. Pray that this message has blessed your soul. And if you'd like to reach out to us in prayer or further Bible study, just give us a shout. The number is there at the bottom of the screen. Now, as we are propelled into another week, we pray God's peace, God's blessings upon you and your family. And always remember that here at South Union, we love you. And there's not a thing that you can do about it. Be blessed in the Lord. And we'll see you right back here on Wednesday night, Lord willing. Take care and have a good evening. Good night. Oh yes, your word. You're holy, say. Oh, holy is your holy is your name. You are worthy, Lord. So worthy. I know I'm not worthy. I am not worthy of your grace. Can we sing it again? You are holy. So holy, Lord, Lord you're holy. Oh, holy is your name. I just want to declare that you're worthy of 
Smile on my face, you're my 